Hello and welcome to Failure and Analysis. My name is Kevin Jordan and I'm going to talk today about this little graph here that someone put up on, Archie put up on uh, Reddit. And I think it offers some interesting insight, uh, potentially, into what's been going on with WOW uh, across its history. And <clears throat> first of all, disclaimer, I don't know how accurate these are. But uh, there's two potential things we can look at here in this document or in this graph. Uh, one is the location of the points, which we can talk about, and the relationship between the data points, which I think is can also be potentially correct and uh, lends insight into what's been going on uh, with WOW. So let's dive right in. So the first thing uh, I notice is in general, uh, the decline of the game subscriptions over time um, in a pretty steady downward angle. Uh, that can certainly be attributed to just age of the game. Um, they either, uh, the game either fails to retain uh, people over a long time or it fail and potentially it fails to convert new players uh, into longtime players to sort of backfill for the people that are leaving the game. Because uh, at this point, not only was it retaining um, existing players, but it was also adding new players that had caught the bug of you know the, the WoW experience and continued to play um, for as long as some of the early adopters had played. Uh, so there's two kind of forces at work. Um, and I believe one of the things that WoW has gotten worse at is attracting and keeping new players. I think the new player experience has gotten worse and um, has failed to capture you know, that new player for the long term, um, which is something it was much better at in vanilla BC and in Wrath even, <clears throat> but, and there are, there are a number of reasons why, uh, which I've spoken about quite a bit on my channel, on my Twitch channel, uh, but, um, yeah, let's, let's sideline that for now and look at some of these later data points. So the big thing I think is, um, there's two things we can analyze. We can analyze the sub numbers themselves um, to say, well, it looks like uh, Miss Pandaria did not attract as many people as Cataclysm did, right? Like if you look at the Cataclysm sub numbers, which were still on par with Wrath, these are people that continued to play through Wrath and at the launch of Cataclysm. And then people started canceling subs and the backfill wasn't enough to keep those numbers high and so by the time Missa Pandaria came out people were unhappy with Kata essentially um, and not interested in Missa Pandaria to check it out to see if if changes had been made so not only did we lose people but we lost um, when I say we uh, I was gone by then so they lost people um, and the promise wasn't even there, right? The promise of improvements and fundamental changes to the game wasn't enough to bring them back to take a look, right? Because um, when I look at these data points, I look at when it launches, like if you look at Legion here, and then I look at the lowest point before the next expansion came out. So this is the promise. These are the true believers that believe um, the game has a, an opportunity to become the game that they love again and they want to believe that the new expansion is moving the game in the right direction, right? So they all sign up. They all check it out. And this is coming in at 10 million, but there's also in, in Warlords, this was also 10 million and in Mists, it was also 10 million. So throughout this entire point right here you can see 10 million people essentially believe that the game still has promise 
and they want to believe, they're desperate to believe that the game's latest X-Pack or expansion can deliver on that potential, can deliver on that promise so that they can start playing the game that they've loved for a while again. <clears throat> and then the difference between that and the lowest point is essentially what have what have they achieved in terms of realizing that potential this is where they believe and this is what reality is for a lot of people right so a lot of people drop off between believing and desperately hoping and desiring and then what in reality is what the game has actually done for them um, and so, you know, back in the day, right, not only was the game uh, still a attracting new customers and pulling them in to the experience, it was also delivering on the promise and the potential of the game. So throughout here, the potential was still being uh, strived for and still they were still achieving the potential and then afterwards <clears throat> after cataclysm i mean this this to me right these three data points are so telling because look how many people still believed by legion even after they had been burned by mop because you'll see the downward swing had been believing again and then burned by warlords and then believing again <laughs> and then burned by Legion, right? <clears throat> and it wasn't until after three expansions, several years of failing to meet the potential, like in, in Mists, this many people believed, man, they, it, they can't do it, or they're not doing it. Warlords, they signed up again. Man, they're not doing it. They're not getting it done. Legion, oh, I still believe bang even bigger group have decided nope but you don't actually see the believers start to take a hit until bfa and bfa assuming this data point is correct right you've lost three and a half million people essentially from the believer group right and and then of course you know this number even hits you know but it not as bad right and it's still young because we we can't see the next expansion yet. But um, this is the sort of the same angle as the last three expansions: belief to disbelief, right? Belief to disbelief. <clears throat> and in MOP, it wasn't as bad. So mists, the angle wasn't as sharp. And you can see sort of the um, what looked like the expansion points. Um, as things start to go up and then back down and then back up there's probably not the sorry not the expansion points but the patch points that are like full of promise again bring it out and then nope and then oh back up a little bit and then bfa launches huge belief again and then nope All right they get in there and see it so they're failing to retain um essentially belief like i don't believe that this the decline here has to do with running out of content. I don't think people necessarily rip through the content this fast and then get tired of the game and unsub and wait for the next. Like, I think it's a combination of some people running out of content and some people not enjoying the content that they're actually doing, right? Uh, but that's another thing to consider when it comes to what is Blizzard's job in terms of retaining people from one X pack to the next. Um, it's to make enough content and quality content that keeps people intrigued for as long as possible before the next X pack. And I think they're failing on both counts. But this is the most telling one right here um, to me because the belief was still strong for this five year period right between 2012 and 2017 where people were like they can turn it around they can turn it around and then bfa launches and it's like this is a really sharp decline in the number of people that believe that wow can be turned around and i think now we're at that crossroads where it's like they've lost a lot of trust 
and they're going to have to make big steps. They're going to have to do big things in the right direction to get these belief numbers back up. So, um, <clears throat> and this is an interesting point for um, games in general that do sequels and whatnot. Like, uh, I'll reference Diablo 3 here. Diablo 3 was always going to be successful from a, a unit sold standpoint because Diablo 2 was such a huge success. But Diablo 3 um, made people unhappy. Uh, quite a few people were unhappy with Diablo 3, and now um, that puts a lot of pressure on Diablo 4 to be better because you won't, you won't get that auto buy-in that you got in with Diablo 3 based on the success of Diablo 2 and the enjoyment of Diablo 2. So it was something we always talked about where it's like, yep, Diablo 3 is pretty much guaranteed to be good in terms of sales, but you're going to potentially destroy sales of Diablo 4 if you put out a product that's not very good, right? So, and this sort of shows me for the MMO, like, wow, how long you can actually disappoint people, right? You know, which I think is really interesting. So anyway, that's my brief analysis of uh, what these numbers show me. Um, and sort of hopefully, you know, the devs are thinking about these kinds of things when they work on the next expansion. But they should be aware that they've lost a lot of faith and a lot of trust based on these points here. Um, but... And, you know, again, as always, the ball's in their court to re-earn it, but we shall see. I do think um, Blizzard and WoW are at a real crossroads right now. I think the message has been received and is being received even more and more loudly um, that people are disappointed and unhappy with quite a few of the things they've done. And so they're at a crossroads where they get to determine now what's the right way to move forward. And hopefully it's not a mass matter of them not getting the message. Um, it's a matter of what do they do now with that message. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. And uh, if you uh, did enjoy it, please leave a like and subscribe and uh, come follow me on Twitch. I'll see you soon. Take care.